Amendment to the rules of procedure offered by Mr. Gates of Florida in rule two following paragraph F, insert the following and read designate subsequent paragraphs accordingly. G, at the start of each meeting, the chair or the chair's designee may lead the committee in the Pledge without of Allegiance. Without objection, the amendment's reply. considered as read. Gentleman from Rhode Island, right Gentleman from Rhode Island will uh, explain his amendment. Mr. Chairman, the amendment is the language that I just read uh, that would add provided, however, uh, no indi an individual. The gentleman will suspend for just a second while we get copies to members. You started it. Thank you. Gentleman from uh, Rhode Island is recognized to explain his amendment to the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is the language that I uh, reported just a moment ago. It would add in the second paragraph after the word code, provided the pledge shall not be led by an individual who supported an insurrection against the government of the United States in any way. Uh, the only thing I would provide an additional explanation since the rule authorizes the chair or your designee to um, lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. That determination would obviously be made by the chair of the committee. Uh, but I think it's important language so that we can have some confidence that we don't make a mockery by selecting someone to lead the Pledge of Allegiance who, in fact, participated in any way in the overthrow of the government of the United States. So uh, I ask my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to accept the amendment and look forward to voting for the uh, underlying amendment for Mr. Gates. The gentleman yields back. Who seeks rec recognition? The gentleman from um, uh, California. Mr. McClintock is recognized. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just point out that insurrection is a crime, and it's adjudicated by a court of law and imposed by the verdict of a jury. Conviction of this crime makes the person ineligible to serve in the House. So, so by definition, no one who's committed insurrection can lead the Pledge of Allegiance in the House because they cannot serve in the House. Mr. McClintock, sounds, will you yield? It sounds not yet. It okay. sounds, sounds like my, my friend from Rhode Island wants to be judge, jury, and executioner, which I find a curious position for the House Judiciary Committee to take. <laughs> Mr. McClintock, will you yield for a question? Sure. Or a call? I don't think the amendment limits the leading of the Pledge of Allegiance to members of this committee. In fact, today we had someone lead us who's not a member of the committee. So I agree with you that nobody on this committee has been con convicted of insurrection, uh, but the language doesn't limit the leading of the Pledge to members of this committee. So I think your concern is interesting well, but I, misplaced. I, I, I wonder who the gentleman thinks would invite someone convicted of insurrection. Well, I, I think we should all anything. agree no one who has participated in insurrection should lead the Judiciary Committee in the Pledge of Allegiance. So it shouldn't be complicated to accept this well, amendment. Nobody who committed murder is going to be Well, then you should vote either. for the amendment. <laughs> and you should vote for the amendment. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Who seeks recognition? Gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Johnson. I'm sorry. Mr. Strike the last word. Um, I appreciate my friend, Ms. Cicilline, and, and I enjoy the, the banter that we have on the committee, but it is unfortunate that we've begun the very first day, the very, you know, the adoption of the rules package by overly politicizing something that should not be politicized. And you and I both know, and whether you want to acknowledge it here or not, this is about politics. This is a completely superfluous amendment. You're making it political to try to make a point, and, and we get it. Um, it is just very sad that we're, that we're wasting time on it. Um, I don't think there's any insurrectionist who's going to show up to offer the pledge, and if they would, they would not be recognized, and so this is uh, completely uh, unnecessary. But I, I do want to make a, a, a note just very quickly about what the gentlelady from North Carolina said, her invocation of West Virginia v. Barnett, a case from 1943. Just so you know, if you, you know, those who don't are not familiar with the case, that was what the Supreme Court said, that school children could not be compelled to recite the pledge. Uh, if they had some sort of sincere belief that uh, prohibited them from doing so. Um, we're not school children here. We're supposed to be the vanguard. We're supposed to be the guardians of, uh, of, of our constitutional uh, freedoms, our, our civil liberties, our civil rights, the Constitution itself. And it's, it's, um, it's just patently absurd to suggest that 
um, grown-ups could not, not make their own decision about participating in the pledge. And if anybody's serving on this committee and is not willing to say the pledge, I would suggest they don't need to be on this committee. Find somewhere else to serve in the Congress. Um, there are some latter precedents, though. That's 1943. Forty years later, in Marsh v. Chambers, the Supreme Court upheld the right to, oh, pray before the opening of a legislative session. In Town of Greece in 2013, the Supreme Court reaffirmed that the, uh, an invocation, a public prayer before a public meeting such as this, a legislative body, is perfectly appropriate. We didn't uh, amend the rules to add that, but gosh, I wish I'd have thought of it. Maybe we should begin with a prayer as well. That would really offend some of our friends on the other side. Um, they have uh, made the, the effort in, in the last couple of years to remove under God uh, from the witness oath here that has been a tradition of the United States Congress for as long as anyone can remember. Uh, in, in fact, in, in, this, in, in our subcommittee, the subcommittee on the Constitution, the chair in the last Congress, Mr. Cohen, who's not present today, actually prohibited the swearing in of witnesses because, uh, because I, I demanded as the ranking member that they also say, so help me God, at the end of their, um, of their oath. Uh, and, and so uh, it just goes to show you there's a strong contrast here between the two sides. It's unfortunate, it's sad, we wish it weren't so. But there are, there are, there are two different um, parties represented here, two completely different philosophies, two completely different worldviews, and, uh, and it's on display here on the very first day in the very first moments of the Judiciary Committee in the 118th Congress. I, it's just a very stark. I'll yield to the gentleman from Florida. Uh, I thank the gentleman for yielding. I also oppose the Cicilline Amendment as it is infinitely regressive. If we are to list out everything that would be disqualifying for someone, we, as Mr. McClintock mentioned, we'd have to list murder and battery and armed robbery and all the other things that are taking place in all of the Democrat-run cities and states that have defunded police and are continuing to see violence rise. So rather than listing every offense, I think the underlying amendment is sufficient to allow the chair to be able to make a judgment about who could be designated to lead the pledge and the uh, amendment would be unnecessary and, and superfluous and regressive. I yield back I, to the gentleman. I thank the gentleman in the time I have re remaining. That, that does remind me that most of the members, at least the, uh, the members who served on this committee in the last Congress were on record at some point saying they wanted to defund the police and um, that seems a pretty uh, subversive thing. And, and I, I read into the record on, on a, a more than one occasion in this uh, committee their actual statements to that, uh, to that point. So, Again, don't need to go down this trail. We're overly politicizing something. I oppose this amendment, and, and I think it is uh, obvious to everybody what this is about. It's unfortunate. Yield back. Gentleman yields back. Who seeks recognition? Gentlelady from uh, Georgia, Ms. McBath, is recognized. Thank two. you so much, Mr. Chairman. I just have to say I really take offense to the comments that were just made about uh, individuals on this side of the aisle that actually have worked or tried to defund the police. Um, you know, or just are not in a support of the United States and the flag that is extremely offensive. And I know for, for a fact we have, Democrats have spent as much time and effort as the Republicans trying to make sure that we are securing all the resources that we possibly can for our law enforcement. We support law enforcement. So I really take great offense <coughs> to the comments that are made. And I, I hope that you will gingerly going forward not try to um, just make those kinds of broad statements about um, my colleagues on this side of the aisle, and I yield back. General, General Lee uh, yields back. Uh, who seeks recognition? Gentleman from Texas, Mr. Hunt is recognized. Hey, Sergeant, thank you so much for your service. That gentleman right there represents the best of us all. And the fact that we're having a political, political conversation about this is actually wrong. The only thing that we want to do is recognize the best, those brave men and women that are willing to give their lives and a sacrifice for us to be able to convene the day in a room like this. I am one of those people. I served in combat, I'm a West Point graduate. I am the kind of person like that gentleman sitting right there that's willing to die for this country. For us to sit here together and offer just a little bit of homage to those that are willing to do that, I think it's not, it's not nothing we shouldn't be doing, it's actually necessary. You see, that flag represents the deaths of thousands of men and women. 14 of them, actually, my West Point classmates. And every day that I get up, I look at that flag and I thank God that we are here. So the fact 
that we get to sit here together and have this conversation based on the sacrifice of that flag and the gentleman that came here and said that today should speak volumes to how we should conduct ourselves moving forward in the future. Quite frankly, you are correct, sir. We should be saying the pledge every single day, every single morning, and every single committee. Because when I was in elementary school, that's what I did. And I worked my butt off to be sitting here right now in this room, and the least we can do is to pay homage to the sacrifice of those that have come before us to say, you know what, Democrat or Republican, we are in this right. together. That flag is the one thing that unites us. Let's just take 30 seconds yeah. to put all of our differences aside and say, we can agree that this country is wonderful, this country has done outstanding things, and that brave men and women were willing to die for it. And that's what sets us apart from every other country in the entire world. Every generation stands up to die and fight for that flag. The least we can do is send the Pledge of Allegiance. I yield back. I thank the gentleman. The question is on the amendment to the amendment. Gentlelady from, or excuse me, I, I, Mr. Klein had been wanting to get in the queue. Oh, the, then the gentlelady from Indiana is recognized, Ms. Sparks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was not going to debate on this, but I thought it shouldn't be that hard. But actually, uh, one of my constituents a few days ago shared with Ms. Sampson, and I really wanted to share with this committee, it was a essay from a fourth grader from her uh, friend's granddaughter. And the say was about, what do you think about when you see our country's flag? And I would like to read it. It's a fourth grader, Catherine. When I think of our country's flag, I think of how our soldiers were willing to get killed uh, for, for us to have our freedom. Our flag shows so much, it just makes me happy because it stands for freedom. It stands for how bad it was and how we won. It all makes me feel protected because it stands for the people who died and freedom, so no one will bother us. It also stands for the freedom of speech, freedom of vote, freedom of worship. This flag lets us do whatever. The flag also shows how much we matter and how hard we tried and how we won. So I really hope that maybe our committee has a little bit more common sense than really, you know, just a fourth grade. It seems to me that we should not debate. We have an issue to debate, but this is show the strength, the unity, what is our republic is about, and how many people died for our freedoms, and how many people are dying for freedoms now to be able to have what we have. This constitutional republic is the best what we have, and I hope we're going to debate real issues but not the Pledge of Allegiance. I yield back. I thank the gentlelady. Questions on the amendment to the amendment. All, the, all, all those in favor of the amendment to the amendment say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. 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 Opinion of the chair, the nays have Mr. it. Mr. Chairman, ask for a recorded vote. A recorded vote has been asked for. Uh, for the amendment to the amendment, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Jordan. No. Mr. Jordan votes no. Mr. Issa. No. Mr. Issa votes no. Mr. Buck. Mr. Buck votes no. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates votes no. Mr. Johnson of Louisiana. 